tonight's episode, <laughs> we're searching for the rare tomato hornworm. <laughs> <laughs> So it's about 10 o'clock at night. We're out in the greenhouse and we're searching for tomato hornworms. And if you're not familiar with those, they, uh, they have a kind of a green, ugly uh, caterpillar looking. With a horn. With a horn on it. And they devour your tomato yeah, plants. Yeah, they will devour your tomato plants. So we're out here and we're gonna get them. And we have a secret weapon with us. We have a black light and they will actually show up at night uh, kind of glow at night so you can find them a lot easier because they are really difficult to find. So let's go see if we can find some. But do you see that glowing on the stem? Is that where they were? It's, that, that's what they say that it that they leave a trail now if you do happen to see a hornworm don't be afraid of the horn it's actually not a stinger uh, it won't harm you at all but they are ugly and they don't want to let go when they're on that tomato plant they want to hold on for dear life and they usually are on branches and you can tell they eat the branch leaves right down to the stem and they'll actually eat your tomatoes as well. They like to hide underneath the leaves. That's why I'm looking up underneath here, seeing if I can find them. Oh, there he is. Oh yeah, so you see how he's glowing? in there and then the bucket's kind of lighting up it's glowing a little bit yeah it's kind of hard to see on camera but it is he is glowing I see yep all right let's make sure it's not another all one. slimy and gross yeah they're disgusting and in the daytime, if you look at your leaves and you see little black, looks like, just like little pieces of dirt almost. That, that's their poo. That's their poop. And we saw a bunch of black little turds on the tomatoes. So we figured we had some hornworms and we'd want to come out here and check for them. But they're really difficult to find during the day. They, they look almost exactly like a leaf. You want to get a nice bright black light in order to see. Uh, we made the mistake of buying a real cheap one, like $10, and it just really didn't do anything. It didn't give off any light at all. We got do, you see, do you see that, that leaf, that oh, yeah. branch right there? That's totally decimated. Yep. So there is definitely a hornworm on this plant somewhere. All right, I'm going to turn the light off so we can... Yep. Oh yeah. Tim? Yep. That's huge. Okay. I'm trying to grab him and keep the light on. Oh man, they are like stuck on there. Yeah, that's a big one. That is a big one. Let's see if there's any more on there. And you can see, you can see all the, where he was. Yep. Oh, everything is glowing where, mm -hmm. where he was. They leave a disgusting, goopy trail. It's like a, like slime from mm -hmm. Ghostbusters. Slime, Slimer? I don't know. I forget his name. So tonight we got three tomato hornworms. Our eyes are killing us from looking, using the black light, but um, not too bad for all the tomatoes that we have. So 
We're gonna check the tomatoes again tomorrow and see uh, if we can find any more. I'm sure there are some that we're missing because they are really uh, good hiders. <laughs> so you guys have a good night. <laughs> So as you saw in the video last night, Cheryl and I picked some of these hornworms off of our tomato plants. We noticed some dark droppings on our tomato leaves, uh, which is a great indication that you might have hornworms on your tomatoes. On average, hornworms are between three and four inches long. The larger larvae are green and they have a V-shaped uh, pattern on their back. Um, you can also notice on the back uh, abdomen section, it has a, a little horn, um, which is not a stinger. Um, it cannot hurt you. It doesn't bite. Uh, it, does, it does look a little intimidating though. So as soon as a hornworm caterpillar hatches, they begin to feed right away. And so for like three or four weeks, uh, they're eating constantly and they can eat up to one ounce of food throughout their lifespan. So as they mature, they're going to eventually drop off your tomato plants and burrow into the ground and they're actually going to stay in the ground uh, until spring and they're going to emerge as a moth. So you definitely want to keep an eye out for these guys because they're usually around till late summer uh, and even early fall. And they're not just on your tomato plants, you want to keep an eye out for them on your potatoes, your eggplants and even peppers. So some of you might be wondering, how do I protect my plants from the hornworm? Um, one of the things you can do is actually remove the weeds from um, your garden area. That's going to reduce the number of places where the worm can lay their eggs. Uh, the best way to really get rid of them is uh, probably by just pan picking them. They are in a sense kind of easy to find because they're so large, uh, but they do camouflage really well. Uh, they like to hide up underneath the branches and leaves. So uh, just like Cheryl and I used the black light, um, that seemed to be a really effective uh, method because they do have a um, kind of a glow to them with the black light that really helps. I know a lot of people don't like using pesticides or even organic pesticides for that matter. Um, Cheryl and I use like a neem oil or diatomaceous earth uh, very sparingly. Uh, but we did recently find a product that we liked and it worked really well called Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. Um, and it's a, a concentrate. You only need about four tablespoons to one gallon of water. Um, it's the main content in it is called spinosad and it typically um, the the list of some of the bugs that kills are uh, bagworms, borders, beetles, caterpillars, uh, coddling moth, gypsy moth, loopers, leaf miners, uh, spider mites, tent caterpillars, stripes, and um, basically any kind of worms and caterpillars. So uh, you might want to check that in, uh, check that out. Uh, it really seemed to to help uh, with us. We haven't used it on our tomatoes so far. We haven't really had that big of an issue with the tomato hornworm. Um, we've been picking off two or three here or there. Um, but if you're having issues with uh, any other bugs that fall into that category, you might wanna check that out. So some of the things that you can do to prevent the hornworms from actually coming in in the first place is to till up your soil um, and that will kill some of the larvae in the, in the ground. Uh, believe it or not, uh, wasps are one of their enemies, so you want to keep wasps around. I don't usually like wasps around, but uh, that's one of the beneficial insects to killing some of the uh, hornworms. Another beneficial insect is ladybugs, and they're great to have in your garden. By interplanting dill or basil or marigolds, and they're a really good companion plant, and that tends to keep the hornworms to a minimum. So according to the Farmer's Almanac, there is a difference between the tomato hornworm and the tobacco hornworm. And there's a, a few different ways you can tell the difference. Uh, the tobacco hornworm, they have per parallel white stripes and the tomato hornworm have t uh, white V-shaped markings. Uh, the tobacco hornworm have black spots lining each of their stripes and the tomato hornworms do not. Um, probably the easiest way to tell is the tobacco hornworm have a red horn on their tail and, and the tomato hornworms have a black horn. So apparently this is a tobacco hornworm. So it's our hope that you were able to take something away from this video and that you enjoyed it and that your gardens are free of hornworms or any other pesky bugs. Please consider subscribing to our channel. It really does mean a lot to us and we do love our subscribers. We love talking with you guys. Please leave any comments or questions that you have for us below and we'll be sure to get to them. You guys have an awesome day. 
Tonight we're in search of the rare spotted tomato hornworm. They're not spotted. They're not spotted.